Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode. And today we're going to talk about why you should date your inner artist. Do you know what? Yeah. I hate that dating your inner artist. (laughs) It's a bit late now. (laughs) We'll carry on anyway. It's a bit icky, isn't it? suggest why you should I suggest you just carry on with the rest of your intro (laughs) why you should why you should schmooze your (laughs) woo woo your your inner artist no just uh I can't believe you've left it until the first sentence of the podcast to tell me we shouldn't have this title (laughs) okay but can't carry on with the rest of the intro shall we say woo why you should woo your inner artist? Why you should uh... <laughs> maybe maybe we could get people to come up with better titles than we have for our podcast? Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. Yeah. Well, okay. am I saying date then for now? <laughs> yeah, go on, date. Oh well, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna now I'm gonna start again. <laughs> I've got to start again. Okay, so <clears throat> where was I? Yes, that's right. Welcome to today's episode. And today we're going to talk about why you should date your inner artist. But what? before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hate, right. I, I, hate that. That. I, I can't hate that edit all of that. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> That's just going to all have to stay in. <laughs> I don't like date your inner artist, but carry on. <laughs> Can you just put some tape over your mouth for yeah, five okay. minutes? <laughs> okay. But before we get on to that, we just want to say a big thank you to our latest Kofi supporters because it really helps us to keep this podcast going. And we are going to thank all of you personally at the end of the show. Now, Tara, you you are now allowed to speak. Okay, thank you. We always really appreciate your support because not only does it help us towards the cost of running Kicking the Creatives, which helps keep us doing what we do, but it also shows you like what we do. So a big thank you for that. Uh, and we've got a podcast review. Oh, I love podcast reviews. Yeah. And they say, you come up with terrible titles for your podcast. Oh. They, don't, they, don't, they don't say that at all. It I... says, what a find. Useful and wide-ranging discussions that are a pleasure to listen to. Thank you. And that's from Hokey Cokey by Apple Podcast in the UK. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We do appreciate it. And we also want to say thank you to everybody who's been sharing their work for the challenges with us on social media. And there are so many people posting. I mean, (laughs) there's thousands every day now, isn't there? So it is a real feast for the eyes. Um, Did you see Margaret Gray's February Faces? Yeah, Margaret is a genius with ink, isn't she? Oh, God. Do you know, she did these little, like, thumbnail. I think there's probably, what, uh, maybe six or nine on a page, little thumbnail Um, squares and she did these little tiny faces in there. I love them. I I used to look forward to them every time she posted them. I was like, oh, look at these. They're so lovely. So yeah, I really enjoyed those. Julia Lepopsky, she did uh, 50 ways to draw a face and she used actually a cat. So I thought that was quite novel because obviously most people are doing faces and she did a cat's face. She did that 50 times. So yeah, that was, that was really great as well. And I loved seeing how different people have um, approached that uh, challenge because that's quite a new challenge isn't it yeah people were saying where do they find that and if you go to our website i think it's in any time challenges yeah uh, and all the challenges is you find yourself one reference photo that you like of a face and say it could be a human or an animal whatever you prefer and then you draw that in 50 different ways and i mean i did it over 50 days but you can do whatever time period suits you really it's a really so, good yeah. way of trying because, uh, you know, a couple of people said, God, it's getting difficult now, but it forces you to try different uh, medias or different styles or just experiment, which is great, isn't it? Yeah, I've actually got some tips for that. So I think maybe in the future I'll make a little video. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, we could do ideas. a podcast. Oh, we could do. What, just we could... 50 faces? 
Yeah, we could, and we could um, call it something rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be good at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or we could do one just to get ideas to experiment. Yeah, Maybe Let's that would that. be one. Maybe we should do that next. Maybe we should. Anyway, let me carry on before we get done yeah, too caught, much. What's caught your eye? Um, I really liked some stylized faces from Constant Curiosity on Instagram. So I really like those. They were kind of slightly cartoony, but very stylish. I like those. Uh, also, Imaginings by Karen. Now, I don't know if you saw, but she was creating these little collages that included a face. Oh, yes, I did. I really, they were so quirky. I just really love those. And Karen is great because she's a really big supporter of us, isn't she? So she's cheering us along. So we want to give her a, a big cheer out as well. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, what's new with you, Sandra? Oh, what is new with me? Well, Storm Eunice. Storm Eunice hit. It probably feels like a lifetime ago to everybody now because since then war has broken out and all sorts of awful things are happening. But um, we had this storm uh, and, oh, my gosh, it, it, do you know what? It left so many people without power for days and days. We were one of the lucky ones. We had power. We just didn't have internet. And you can imagine everything that Tara and I do involves internet, whether that's podcasting, you know, looking through social media and commenting and on our Facebook group, couldn't get onto that. Also at work in my actual other job, um, everything relies on internet, um, everything, including the phone. So it was a nightmare. And we were kind of briefly talking about this earlier, weren't we, Tara, that you do not know just how much we rely on the internet now until we don't have it. Yeah. It's an absolute nightmare. And the worst bit as well was that um, EE were also having problems. So even texting was kind of really hit and miss. I had to kind of stand, um, I don't know, with my arm out a window or climb a tree or something. <laughs> basically put my arm up into orbit to be able to get a signal. So... Yeah, it meant that I was totally absent from the group for a while. I couldn't do anything really for kicking the creators at all. So poor Tara, you had to kind of do everything. And, oh, poor me. Oh, poor you, poor you. And the worst thing is as well, because obviously everything has grown so much. The group has grown so much. Instagram is on fire. And, you know, we both look at Instagram every day. We both put us some stories up and have a look through. And it was kind of all down to you that week. So, yeah, you did a great job, by the way. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, so when I came back on, <laughs> actually, what really happened is we lost internet for two hours. I told Tara we did, we'd did lost it. Yeah, for a week. <laughs> that one surprised me. <laughs> um, but anyway, what it did mean is it gave me an opportunity to um, do some more painting than what I would have done, uh, you know, where I would have been working or doing things for King and Creators, I, I couldn't do that. So I sat down at my easel and I got, you know, cracking with my my painting that I'm doing at the moment. Um, if you want to see a, you know, a, a photo of where I'm at now as we record this, you just need to go on our, well, on my Instagram, um, sandra.busby, and you'll be able to see it. It's, the, it's a crushed Coke can, not the red one. It's a, got like one of those caffeine-free Coke cans. And I am loving it. I, 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 it's one of those, you know, you get those paintings, don't you? We just feel like it's falling from the brush. Yeah. It's one of those where I just, I'm just loving it. Absolutely loving it. And I'm sailing through it. I'm already just starting my upper layer. And then after that, it'll be all about those sort of highlights and final touches. So, yeah, normally I would have shared more of the process on my Instagram, but of course I wasn't able to get on, on it for a, for a while. So, yeah. You know, you know those finishing touches that you do? Do you yeah. ever mess up the finishing touches? No, because no, no, no I don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can overdo them. Yeah. Um, but of course, with what's great with oils, and, and, you know, I work in layers. So worst case scenario, if I did something and I wasn't happy with it, I'd just pull it off. You know? Yeah, I know, but it's that. Yeah, I'd worry about pulling it off. I suppose the underlayers are, are fairly well, dry. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you can't, you know, go in it. I'm talking yeah. about very softly with a cotton yeah. bud or something. We're talking about final details here. I mean, it's like anything, isn't it? I mean, I always think, you know, you see some people that do these amazing oil paintings, and then they they get a bit too. Um, what happens? They put a highlight down, and they think, oh my gosh, that looks amazing, and it does. It, it does. It, pop make something pop so what they do is they think oh i'm gonna put loads more of these in and then all of a sudden 
it's it's overkill and i've seen it um i've seen it on portraits where people have done the most beautiful realistic portraits and then they'll suddenly put a highlight in the eye but they'll make it bright white and right, then they'll think yeah. that is amazing and then they'll do another little dot in the eye and you you look at it and think that's not how a highlight in an eye would ever look it would never be bright white for a start and sometimes you don't you it's barely a highlight at all so it's it's things like that it's not overdoing something you think that looks great so i'm going to do it some more you've got to think that looks great but sometimes less is more let's not do it let's not do any more do you know what i mean it's kind of yeah that's something i've learned over time Really? Oh, do you know, I hate it because even the stuff I'm doing, obviously they're, they're not the time-based things like yours, mm. but I'll get to a point and I'll think, I don't know, is that finished? And then it's like, uh, do and you can think, I think it kind of needs a bit there, but you never know till you put it there. I, as that- soon as I th- think to myself, oh, you know, is this finished? Yeah. That is when I then I'm very, very careful before I do anything else because as soon as you think that, it probably is. And Sometimes it's not, though. Sometimes it's not, but then the the trick is leave it. Leave it for a day, walk away, and the next day you'll see straight away whether or not it needs that thing. I'm not really very good at leaving No, you're not patient, are you? No, I'm not. (laughs) So usually what I'll do is Kevin's home and I'll go up and say, is this finished? (laughs) And he'll go, (laughs) he'll either go, oh, yeah, don't put any more of that, and he'll go, looks like it needs you know something yeah. else so yeah anyway what is new with you well my world is very much nfts at the moment outside mm-hmm. of kicking the creatives i've i've been really concentrating on nfts and twitter and i've sold a few more so just before you carry on there'll be yeah. lots of people out there going what is an mft without going too deep just yeah. very very briefly what is an nft an nft is well, it's something digital, in, in this case, art, a uh, digital piece of art where you've got proof of ownership. So in essence, someone will buy a digital version of one of your paintings. Right. Yeah. And you're, sa- you're you- selling hand over fist, Tara. You're doing so well. <laughs> I'm not selling hand over fist, but I have sold quite a few now, yeah. which I'm I'm absolutely gobsmacked by i know i keep getting text I mean, saying oh my god i've sold another I one because <laughs> it's like i just never expected it no. especially because i've gone over to twitter which i haven't used twitter for years and i never really used it in an art sense you know as me being an artist i've mm-hmm. used it in the in previous lives you know blogging about different things so i didn't have an audience so i've just completely gobsmacked that people have bought it so what else is new with you anything else that's it i think it's that boring <laughs> i haven't done anything else oh well that, I mean, that, that that brings us though doesn't it yeah very nicely on what we're talking about today you're saying you haven't done very much i haven't actually been out I, you know i do we need to go out sketching soon Let's we do because yeah. spring's come along yeah I'm not calling that a date <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did try once. Tara and I went to London, and um, we went to. We were staying over, weren't we? Oh, was it? Or was it Brighton? Oh, Brighton. I stayed. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. It was in Brighton, and yeah. we said we'd go for a meal. And there was this. When I looked online at where we could go, there was this one thing that said, um, "If it's your anniversary, you can have a free pudding." Yeah. So I pretended we were, I basically were going to say that um, that Tara and I were a couple and it was our anniversary. You were <laughs> horrified, weren't you? <laughs> was, yeah. And Brighton is the gay capital of, 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 of this country, basically. So but, nobody would have batted an eyelid. But, but let I, me explain something, Sandra. <laughs> we're not gay. Oh, I know, but, you know, for free pudding. <laughs> You'd do anything for a free pudding, yeah, won't yeah. you? <laughs> I do love a pudding. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right. As we were saying earlier, um, which Tara is now horrified about, is why we should date our inner artist. And it does sound a bit... A bit um, icky. Yeah. Icky. But, but I can't think of a different way of putting it because, okay, so so it's a concept that was sort of spoken very briefly about in that book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And it is a very yeah. brief part of that book. Um, but it kind of makes sense because when you think about it, if you don't look after that side of yourself, your creative side, your creative well is going to dry 
up really, really quickly. And that can lead to lack of inspiration and worse still, artist block. And that is something you really, really don't want. And and I speak from experience. Having artist block is a horrible thing. So you, you kind of need to do things that are going to, um, well, prevent that from happening. So what you have to do is you have to think of your inner artist as a relationship you have with your separate self, which needs to be nurtured. So think of it. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Think of it as your other, <laughs> <laughs> as your other self in oh a way. I know, I t- I'm with you, Tara. I hear you, Tara. I know. And I'm cringing as well because it does sound so <laughs> off the wall. It sounds bonkers, but it, it does actually make sense. I just can't think of another analogy, you know, to make it make sense. Um, so I can. Like, it's just making time for yourself as an artist. Well, that wouldn't make a very interesting way of putting it, would it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the point. Maybe we could rename this How to Make Time for Yourself as an Artist. Making time and space for your creativity, to oh. nurture your creativity. Oh, there you go. Like I said earlier, it's a bit late now. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> so, okay, you've got to think of this as like your other self. Um, we all know you get out of a relationship only what you put into it. And if you neglect it, it's going to suffer. You won't get your pudding. Yeah, you won't get your pudding. (laughs) A bit like a relationship you've got with a spouse. So you need to look after the physical side. Let's not make this rude, Tara. Let's say that's remembering to give your other half a cuddle. Just making sure they feel loved. So metaphorically speaking, that would be the same as being in the act of creating, whether that's painting or writing or whatever it is you like to do. So that's the stuff we love doing the most. But it's also kind of teamwork. So there are things like washing your spouse's pants, um, (laughs) continuously putting the toilet seat down, uh, that kind of thing. Um, So those are the things that are perhaps less pleasurable, but all part of being in a relationship. So I wonder why you leave the toilet seat up. Well, well, Paul does. It's terrible. Uh, And then I end up sometimes he leaves the actual (laughs) lid up. And and the times there are times in the night where I've gone to the loo and I sat on the toilet in the dark and fallen down the toilet because he <laughs> hasn't put the flipping lid down. It drives me nuts. <laughs> and it's so cold, that bit as well. It's that China bit. It's horrible. <laughs> so anyway, let's call that then, that less pleasurable side of your relationship being, um, let's call that the marketing. Falling down the toilet, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so let's call that the marketing side of creativity. So we don't love it, but it's got to be done. It's all part of the relationship. Right. But then there's also the other side to look after. So any good relationship will involve going out on a date from time to time. So do you see why I've I've built this analogy, yeah. Tara? Because I can't yeah. really do this with any other kind of analogy, you know? Okay. So, um, yeah, so you've got to get away from the mundane stuff like, you know, marketing or, um, you know, tidying up pants and things like that and go out purely just to enjoy each other's company. And being different surroundings. So, that- so there's stuff, stuff like being inspired. So if we're talking about being inspired as an artist, how does that relate, do you think, to a date? How is that? Well, okay. If you think about it, getting away from all that sort of boring stuff, going out just to have fun and enjoy each other's company, being in different surroundings, that's a really important way of keeping a relationship fresh and fun you know, it shouldn't be neglected. In fact, that should be, I think, of equal importance to everything else. And the same goes for taking your inner artist on a date. It should be of equal importance to the time actually spent creating. So in order to create something, we've got to draw from, and this is a term I've always hated, but I can't think of anything else, a creative well, or maybe a creative bank or whatever. It's important that you don't allow that to to become empty and one of the best ways of keeping it topped up is to get out and experience other things and like in a relationship it gives you things to talk about and uh, you know where you know if you don't ever go anywhere what are you going to talk about do you know what I mean so with in the art side of things it gives you things to think about and to maybe paint later on or write about or whatever it is you do Okay, so it's like a new stimulus that you yes. wouldn't normally have seen. Yes. Uh, like, like instead of just sitting in front of the TV with your partner, you're going to a restaurant and sitting and looking at each other and talking to each other. Yeah, or going out and, you know, I don't know, going for a walk along the seafront, anything. It doesn't matter what it is. But in this case, it's a date with your 
self, <laughs> which is really weird. So I suppose the basic thing I'm saying here is you have to treat your artist self as a separate being from you and treat that as a different thing, a different relationship you have to look after. And I guess it's also about opening yourself up to ideas. Now, I'm quite keen to hear how you relate this <laughs> to being in a date, because obviously as an artist, by having new experiences, so say you go go somewhere new you've never been before, whether that's a, a, just another town you'd never tried or whether that's going for a walk somewhere you'd never been or whether it's going to another country, then you're going to take in all these new experiences and you don't know if that is eventually going to seep out in your art somehow. You might, you know, see see a mark on the pavement. Like I saw that bird poo pony once, do you remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or you might see something much more beautiful than that uh, and that inspires something in the future now how do you think opening yourself up to new ideas relates to a date okay so maybe kevin whisks you away to paris maybe yeah. you're so inspired by paris and you're, you feel so, it's so romantic that you decide that every thursday is going to be french night and you dress up as french people and start <laughs> having french cuisine and, and talking in a french accent <laughs> <laughs> which I know you've done in the past. Well, I had I in lockdown. Didn't you have French night? No, we for a while. Well, for a while, it lasted about two weeks. We decided we were going to have every like week. We'd have a different country night, and we'd go through the alphabet. But I think we only got to B, um, <laughs> and we'd cook. Or I'd cook a meal that was supposed to be inspired by that place, mm. and we'd try some music. But the music tended to be terrible. Because, you know, if, if obviously if you go for traditional music <laughs> place, it's pretty bad normally, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's a fun thing to do. And actually, you could do that as an artist ape because that would give you inspiration if you were going to mm. uh, research a country. If you couldn't go somewhere, and obviously it's much more restrictive now for going places, research country, cook a meal, have a night to do with that country. You see, yeah. now you're getting the idea. Sorry, now I'm getting really into it. <laughs> right, so we're going to talk about some date ideas, unless you have any else. Why not? You oh. haven't finished the rest of them yet. Oh. It's a chance to get out of your own head. It is, gosh. I mean, because... we all need to get out of yours. <laughs> <laughs> because when you, sometimes you get so focused, don't you, on your art. Yeah. And I think that's almost what gets you to that block sometimes because you become obsessed, say that something isn't working. Why isn't it working? And it just goes round and round in your head. And sometimes you just need to get away from it all doing something completely different and, you know, just make time for yourself. Absolutely. Have, yeah. Ha have a little quiet date on your own. And also feed your brain at the same time. Absolutely, right. yeah. You can now, now give your date ideas. Well, yeah, I, and we're going to talk, sort of go into this a little bit more later, but it's important that you actually go on your own, um, not with your spouse, because this is a different relationship. Art galleries, great place yeah. to start. And it does not have to be the big swanky ones in the famous, you know, cities, London Academy. Or it doesn't have to be any of those. Um, and in fact, I actually personally find local art galleries to be much more inspiring than those big ones because they're often full of surprises and so many different styles of art that perhaps you don't expect to see. You know what you're going to get, don't you, when you go into a city gallery, but you never know what you're going to find in a local one along your own high street. So I, I love going into those. Um, I can't go past one without going in it. And um, I think the great thing about going into galleries is that also gives yourself the opportunity to see inside the minds of other creatives and how they work. I'm not sure if anyone would ever be able to fathom you out, Tara, but Thank you you. Know, if ever I'm feeling blocked, when I go to one of those little small galleries, it almost always lights my creative spark, for want of a better term. It, it almost always makes me think, I can't wait to start something new. Um, so, yeah, and of course the other swanky galleries, yeah, of course, brilliant you know they're always good to go to but just don't forget about those other little places and actually I recently went um to a Van Gogh immersive experience in London and that's um that was pretty amazing it wasn't in a gallery it was in this kind of warehouse type building oh but, right I assumed it was gallery I must admit no it wasn't it, I think they kind of I don't know if it tours or something because a few people on our, our group said that they'd been to it 
that was pretty amazing actually and the part of the immersive experience there was no there was absolutely no originals of van gogh there at all but there was lots of prints um, but there was a lot of information about him which i didn't know which i now can't remember but anyway <laughs> <laughs> lots of you know and lots of things i i learned um and forgot and forgot <laughs> But then what there was is this room where it's like this massive, massive room where floor, walls and ceilings were just covered in these um, paintings that were kind of all animated. So it almost came to life. His his paintings were coming to life before your eyes. It was amazing just being in that room and just looking all around. That was really good. But what was really amazing and actually the best bit was they had, and of course, you had to pay extra for this. But anyway, we did. Um the virtual goggles, which I've never tried before in my life. You, you've tried them. Gog- is it goggles? Virtual- it's an, like an Oculus, like a virtual reality headset. Okay, virtual, yeah, not virtual goggles, sorry. Virtual reality headset. They had these and they said it's £5 extra. I was like, oh, we've got to do it. I'm so glad. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad we did it. Um we it, by the way i went with my friend kerry it was it was her birthday present to me um so she took me on a date how lovely is that and yeah. so we, she, did you go for free pudding as well i didn't her? get a free pudding because it no. wasn't in brighton no oh. <laughs> so anyway we put these virtual reality goggles on which i've never put on in my life i've seen other people on the tv do it and i thought surely why why you know it can't be that real but oh my gosh suddenly i was in van gogh's bedroom and then I went from there out and for a walk along through his town where he lived. It was incredible. Uh, my brain was so tricked into believing I was in this completely different world. It was something like I've never experienced before. So if ever you get the chance to to go on that immersive experience and then you walk past the virtual reality goggles and think, no, I'm not paying extra, pay extra. It's well worth it. Did you actually walk in it or was it? No, no, you sit, you walk sit on the oh, right. yeah. spinny chair, you know, the spinny chairs yeah. that spin around and around. They say, don't get off your chair, but you can spin around and look up and look down and look. And oh, of course, right. when you look around or yeah. you spin around, it, your goggles are taking you, you know, on this. It, it, it will spin around with you. So you're kind of, you can look behind you at where, where you've just gone past. Oh, it's, it's so clever i just don't know how it's done but it's so so clever Mm. anyway have you got any ideas for a date no yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) so yeah i mean yeah there's plenty of places you can visit so even a shop um you know just go to a shop you haven't been to before especially if it's something like an antique shop or a junk shop i love it's also i remember well you've got one in brighton haven't you that's uh, completely bonkers that you took me in but also around here They have antiques markets, you know, more in the spring and the summer. But you go to those, and I'm not into antiques at all, but just seeing all the people, seeing the weird little knickknacks and stuff, anything like that, you can get ideas for colours. You don't even have to think about it like that, do you? You just go and sort of breathe it all in. I think that's quite inspirational. But I did go with my partner to that. Oh, to the antique fair, did so, you? I don't know if it'd be classed as a date still. Well, I think a date you're going specifically to get inspiration. I think you can have a threesome with yourself, <laughs> your partner and your other self. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> okay. So, whatever yeah. works for you, Tara. Yeah, so anything like that I think is, is great. Also, if you've got like... Uh, Probably get three, three puddings for that, I imagine. <laughs> You know when you've got like um, a little flea market as well? That's quite interesting, a market or a flea market, anything like get ideas for colours and stuff. But also an art shop. Who can resist going oh, in an yeah. art shop? Oh, I love them. <sighs> Especially, you know, you get these big ones and it's not just art materials. It's also they've got crafting. As yeah, well. like, not like hobby craft, that yes. kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not into crafting at all, but you can wander along some of that, that aisle and think, oh, 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 I could see how that, you know, could come into what I'm doing. Maybe they've got, you know, paper cutting, cutting out machines. And you might think, oh, maybe I could add some paper cuts to what I'm doing or, you know, or things like that. And also you see new materials that you probably didn't actually know existed yet. I mean, I actually do this line. I go search what are new art materials just out just to see sort of what's happening. Do you do that? No, no. No, I've never. I, I rely on you to give me that information. 
<laughs> but but you could also see things that you think, oh, I'd never thought of combining those things together. Maybe I could use those together. Or like even some trendy handmade papers or something, you might pick something out and think, I'm going to try using that just to make your work a little bit different. Yeah. And then, and also, as well as antique shows, craft shows are quite a nice form of inspiration, aren't they? They, they have some around near me. And, well, first of all, it amazes me how little people sell things for because I think, oh, my I God. Know. It's, it's wrong, You've got this it? amazing piece that you've spent hours on. But you do see some things and you think, oh, I love the colours or love the materials they've used there. And I just think you can pick up some inspiration there. But that's also an atmosphere, isn't it? Well, you get well, an atmosphere. Yeah, definitely. And, and for someone like me who's a still life artist, places like that, like you said, antique shows, craft shows, all things like that, when they've got the little knickknacks, it also gives you ideas of things you can paint. Do you know what oh, I mean? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I like going and sitting in the cafe afterwards and then drawing people. Yeah. At the antique place. Hmm. But again, I didn't do that on my own. So that was a threesome again. <laughs> yeah. So you could also visit places relating to your subject. So, for example, like I just mentioned, you know, I'm a still life artist, so perhaps an antique fair would be perfect for someone like me. Um, if you're into painting maybe landscapes, then go and explore somewhere. Go somewhere completely different. You've never been. Go for a walk, go along the beach, whatever. Regardless of what your creative subject is, the great thing about walking is that you might come across, well, let's say a, a local market along the way or some unusual shops um, or some street musicians. All of these kind of things can get your creative buzz going. Um, remember to take photos as well. Or sketch like you said, Tara, if the mood takes you. Yeah. You know, that'll help you notice things that you might not otherwise. But, you know, don't ever feel like you should be sketching. It's not about being creative, don't forget. It's it's more about getting out and seeing things and absorbing things than it is actually being creative. But yeah, like like you, you can do it if you if you takes your fancy, then why not? Just go into a coffee shop. I love going yeah. for, for a cafe. I know. You can just watch people can't you You can watch people how people interact you can listen in to conversations that you shouldn't be listening to maybe take notes of that and maybe that could form something I mean it's great for cartoons anything like that and writers oh yeah definitely but also you might also if you like drawing people you might look at them and think how could I draw them differently so I think when you and me sketch we'll sketch not realistically, but we'll be fairly true to, we try to be fairly true to what yeah. they look like. Yeah. When, do you remember what we said before? It'd be really nice to go and try and do like a stylized or a cartoon version. Yeah. And I think that's, that's nice because you can just look at those people and think, how could I do it? Mm. You're not putting pressure on yourself to actually do it at the time, but you can sit and think about yeah. how you might approach it. But, but also looking out the window it's amazing how much you miss when you're just walking past something. But if you're sitting there staring at something, you'll notice all the detail, little blotches and bricks, how the windows look. You'll actually look up to what, if you've got like a large building, to what's happening above rather than just walking what's in front of your nose. Yeah, so good. And that's the same if you go for a walk, actually. Have you ever noticed, like, where we used to go on holiday a lot, we'd walk one way around with a dog. So this, we do this loop. And then oh, one day... Yeah. We thought, we're going to loop the other way. It's exactly the same route, but walking the other way. And it's amazing how much you see yeah. by doing it the opposite way around. That is so true. Yeah, everything is from a different angle. So, oh, I never noticed that before. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I agree with that. And you talk about a coffee shop. Yeah. Don't ever be afraid to go into a coffee shop on your own because... If, like you say, if, if you're sitting with somebody, you're constantly sort of thinking, right, well, you want to talk to them, don't you? you? You want to talk to them. You're with them. You've got your company. So you're looking into their eyes. You're talking to them. And you're talking about things that you, you both want to talk about. If you go into a coffee shop on your own and you leave your phone in your bag and you just drink your coffee and look around and, like you say, listen to people, imagine what they're doing, imagine where they live, Perhaps you're, if you're a writer or something, getting ideas for characters, storylines, imagining the unimaginable, maybe that person over there who's also on their own has just, I don't know, 
I don't know. Murdered someone. Murdered their husband and put them under the patio. <laughs> and they're just coming to have a coffee to, I don't know. <laughs> you, it, it's just silly things like that. You can really let your imagination go. And, and one thing I must admit, I, I've never been afraid. Well, I have. When I was younger, when I was in my 20s, I would have been like, oh, I can't go anywhere on my own or I have to have my face in a book if I do this. But now I don't feel like that. If I wanted to sit and and have a coffee in a coffee shop, I will. And I'll look around. And, and actually you can see people looking at me going, oh, she's on her own. How could she's she murdered someone? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, that kind of thing. Really good. Um, I don't like sitting on my own in a coffee shop. Oh, I, lo- I, I love don't being on my. I don't don't like being on my own in public. I like mm. being on my own at home. I'm quite happy walking on my own, like with a dog. But I don't like being on my own in a cafe. Oh, that's interesting. I see. I don't mind it. No. I don't mind it. A pub. I don't know about a pub. I've been into a pub before on my own while I'm waiting for someone, but um, and it doesn't really bother me too much. Whether I would be able to sit in there and have a drink or two on my own and then leave, I don't know. And maybe I could if I was reading or writing or something like that or sketching. But yeah. Maybe in a pub it would look like you were trying to pick someone up, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, not like you were. <laughs> anyway. But, but you're already with someone, aren't you? You're with your other self. Oh, yes. I'll be, I'll be like, actually, yeah. I'm with someone. They're invisible, but I'm with someone. <laughs> uh, theatres. Theatres. Oh, my gosh. Theatres are really inspiring places. At least they are for me. Um, Paul and I actually love going to the theatre. And, of course, I wouldn't go to the theatre on my own. I wouldn't. Um, not just for a big show either, but equally for a play at a local theatre, which Paul and I really like to do. And I love looking at the sets in a theatre. There's something about the whole experience that always makes me feel creative, like I'm a creative person, just because I've been in a theatre. Um, and, you you know, I don't know if you, if you do you ever go to theatres, watch plays, anything like that? Very, very rarely. Um, we went to a concert at a local theatre, just like a, a folk thing. Yeah. And that was quite inspiring. I'd really wish I took a sketchbook there. But years ago, Kevin actually worked on a project building a well renovating a theater because he works in the construction industry yeah and at the end of it when it was all done and it's a a very old theater that was you know being renovated to look old still yeah Uh, and and we got invited to go at the end just like and watch a Shakespeare play now I don't really like stuff like that no to be honest I like you know I don't mind going to theater we're we're not not cultured enough are we no we're not (laughs) but I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. It was actually quite good. Mm. Went on a bit long, yeah. but but it, looking around you as well because it was you know because it's quite oldy worldy the look of it as well. It, yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. And the th- and the, and when you go in a theatre as well, quite often when you look up at the ceiling, yeah. it's just a spectacular thing. You just forget to do that. Just look up. It's amazing what you can notice. Mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> where are you <laughs> oh god no <laughs> anyway you don't anyway. have to go out to be inspired you know sometimes just a break from your routine can be good so what about something really simple like listening to music that you've never heard before it's so easy isn't it to listen to the same old playlists um over and over again the music you uh, you know you like but you deny yourself the opportunity to discover new artists or a new type of music. And Spotify is great for this because you can actually put it on this thing where it says it kind of chooses uh, it, it chooses music it thinks you will like based on what you've listened to before. Yeah, and sometimes just, it chooses terrible stuff, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, sometimes it does. Yeah. But sometimes it's it's brilliant. It's like, oh, I love this. And straight away I'm like, oh, that's, I'm going to favourite that bit and I really, really enjoy it. So the other thing to the important thing to do, though, is is if you can, just actually listen to it and don't do anything else. Do you remember years ago in the 70s and 80s, I'm showing our age here, but um, when we used to have to put our headphones on, we were attached by a long curly wire to this massive washing machine sized hi-fi thing. Um, and we had to sit there and be still while we listened, unless you had it on, you know, off of your earphones. And you couldn't really go anywhere because you had to be plugged in. But actually what that meant is we had to 
listen we couldn't skip forward because it was a record it was like actual vinyl record you couldn't skip forward you had to focus on the full piece of music and we really appreciated that and and I think it's not so easy to do in the world we live in today because um you know we have things like skip and fast forward and um in a way well I think it's a big reason why people you know don't focus anymore they're unable to focus they're just literally oh yeah oh no three beats of this oh no I don't fancy this one and they move on and that's something I think we we need to try and change because it's taking that our focus our ability to focus away I mean it's because everything's so easy to get isn't it it's like Spotify there's another track whereas like you say when we had the old album yes you could take the album off and you could go put another one on or you could put a different radio channel on but that was it it wasn't instant click your fingers was it no because in the time it would take you to take that record off put it back in its sleeve get another one out put that one on you could have probably skipped through i don't know 15 20 uh, 20 bits of music on spotify you know but um yeah so so just for once every now and then just try and actually listen you know um also try listening to a play or a drama or an audio book i mean i actually have just recently um started doing this not audio books because i like to read them in the in the evening but um a play or a drama some of them are absolutely awful <laughs> but some really? of them are actually quite absorbing and and you know yeah i quite enjoy that and of course a podcast i mean doesn't have to be ours there are a couple of other ones out there. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be in your usual niche. So obviously, if you're listening to this, you you are hoping that we know something about art. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, perhaps if, you, if art is your thing, listening to one on travel or something like that instead. Um, yeah, I mean, business ones. I love a business podcast. Yeah, God, no, I just really don't. No, totally good. Yeah. And also, I've recently been listening to ones about crypto because, you know, I've got into NFTs. Yeah. And obviously, they use cryptocurrencies. I've been listening to stuff about that. And that is something I would have never, no. ever have listened to before. But you never know if something from that will seep back into your work somehow. See, I like I like the travel ones. I like ones on books. I like... Also scientific podcasts, especially when they're about space. Oh, I don't mind science. Yeah, yeah I like sciencey ones, space, that kind of thing. I, I like to try something that I perhaps wouldn't normally, but yeah, anything like that. I love that. You can also get ones like The Moth, can't you? Have you heard of that one? No. The Moth? And that's people just telling their story. So they might have an inspiring story to tell. So mm. you're going to get a completely diverse range of thing, yeah. things there. But also you could watch an inspirational video. And uh, that can be on any different topic, but there's some great ones I think we've mentioned before, like TED Talks. I think I introduced you to TED Talks. Yeah, I? we need to do one of those one day. Yeah, if they ever ask us. <laughs> um, but but they're, they're usually only about 15, 20 minutes long, but yeah. it will someone, be someone talking on a specific subject. You've also got Google Google, Google, Google Talks. Are you, are you sure it's not Google Talks? Uh, Google, maybe, yeah, <laughs> Google Talks. Uh, some of those are a bit technical, but they also have, you know, non-techie people in. And there's also 99U. So actually, and it's funny because Kevin actually suggested to me the other day that we should start having a podcast night every week. Oh, yeah. I like that. I was quite surprised about because he said, like, a lot of the TV at the moment is rubbish. Yeah. You know, we have so many channels and it's all rubbish. Well, but especially we after with the, the, the pandemic, obviously, we, we are coming out the other side of it now. Our rules have just been completely, um, take, you know, we don't have rules now. It's great. Um, but obviously, other countries, it's not the same. But because we've had a couple of years with so many restrictions, a lot of things now on the TV are repeats or things you would normally see at this time of year aren't on because they haven't been able to make them. So it'll take a while for that to come back to normal I think yeah so but basically then you you're learning something new or you're hearing yeah. something new you never have heard before you know and he, he suggested like we'll listen to some big boys bloody hell <laughs> listen to some business ones or yeah. some rapping rap, 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 rap ones no we won't listen to rapping ones we'll listen to some like sciencey ones some health ones just taking mm-hmm. some different subjects but again don't don't do it we, we're talking about this as being something separate to actually creating. So, yeah, you might do that when you're actually painting or drawing or whatever you're doing. But actually what the important thing is here is to do these things when you're not creating because otherwise it's coming out of you as fast as it's going in. You need to 
you need to do these things when you're not creating as well as you know you make time for it isn't it yeah, it's make like, separate time for this stuff make time for the date for yourself exactly um, and also look at art in other genres i think so i've mentioned before i think movie and tv credits can be absolutely yeah. beautiful yeah. absolutely amazing inspiration mm. and even though you can skip through them sometimes i'll purposely watch them just because they're fascinating but then yeah. also there's the old classic isn't there just sit down with an art book oh i love you haven't looked through for a while yeah yeah i can sit for hours doing that me too although i do tend to end up getting post-its out and i have books that are just filled with post-its and then i might look look back at it and i think why did i put a post-it in that one I did that the other day. Actually, I pulled an art book out, and there were yeah. post-its or like little tags on the pages. And I was looking and thinking, "What was I looking at in here?" Then, yeah, exactly. Thought, oh, nothing. I don't know what. What on earth? <laughs> What's that for? Nothing interesting yeah. at all. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. Art books. I literally couldn't. I've got so many, and and really, I don't make enough time to sit and just look through them. Sometimes, yeah. Um, but you could even just you know, spend an afternoon binge watching your favourite art show and don't feel guilty about it. Um, Try and think of it as an important part of being a creative rather than just being lazy. Um, So we're talking about things like, I don't know, portrait artist of the year, landscape artist of the year. There's all sorts of other things that aren't competitions, but they are about art. Or, you know, maybe somebody, uh, some celebrity or other is going to Italy to I don't know. Wasn't it Suggs? I think Suggs from Madness did that, didn't he? He went around Italy just no looking idea. at all different art and things like that. And uh, that sort of thing, really lovely to watch. So, um, but it shouldn't be, you shouldn't think, oh, this is just me being frivolous and just sitting around doing nothing helpful because you take it all in, you know. And another thing, I this sounds really daft, but like you said earlier, Tara, none of these things have to cost any money, you know. Sometimes, because obviously most of the time I have a shower, but sometimes I like to take a really long bath with no distractions at all. And, um, Tara, you've always said that your best ideas come when you're on the toilet or rather cleaning the toilet. And cleaning the toilet yeah. is, yeah. But, I, you know, I, I've got this is where I've got too much time on my hands, clearly, because I actually was looking this up. I'm, on, I'm Googling this. Apparently, they're about is, getting ideas while you clean the toilet. Mundane thing. Why do some of your best ideas come when you're doing the most mundane things? Ah. There is actually a, a, a scientific reason for that. It has to bored. do. No, it's got to do with the, the side of the brain that is active when you are doing those things like cleaning. Right. It's the same. It it's, um, tr- triggers activity in your creative side, it uses your creative side of the brain which is why that happens. Um, But likewise, I I get ideas when I'm just having a long soak with no distractions. It allows me to, um, I don't know, just ideas bubble up in my head, which which wouldn't do if I was glued to a TV because I haven't got anything... It's weird. When you you sit there and you you don't think about, or you lay in a bath and you don't think of anything, or you walk, you go for a walk with your dog and you don't listen to a podcast and you don't, you know, have headphones on, and you're not with someone, have you noticed your brain does start looking for things to think about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm always thinking about something. Yeah. And quite often that is when things will, ideas will come in, when you're, it's, you're forcing your brain to allow things to, to seep in rather than... It's got time, hasn't it? Yeah. And it's got, and it's things that you're not putting in there. It's finding something because you're not putting things in there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And another thing I like, um, and I find that really unlocks my creative side, is, is writing. And I don't do nearly enough of it. But that could be anything from writing in a journal or a diary, as we call it, or writing a poem, a short story. All of these things can can help unlock your imagination. What about a lovely blog post? <laughs> <laughs> well, well maybe not things that you 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 do because you need to do it things that you just want to do um you could take your inner artist on a sketching date so okay this is where I was saying earlier wasn't I don't this is separate than actually doing but this I'm talking about something where there's no pressure at all to produce a masterpiece just you a pen a sketchbook having a bit of fun not trying to come up with anything specific so there is always that as well yeah and I guess now we need to go through some tips maybe on how you could 
bring this into your life. Yes. Bring your inner lover into your life. Inner lover? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that is to try and make a little bit of time for your inner lover, yes. maybe once a week if you've got time for that. And that can say, it doesn't have to be something big. It could be a five minute walk. It could be a 10 minute podcast. But if you haven't got time for that, it could be once a month. Um, you can either go out on your date, I don't know, I hate it, date alone or with another artist. And that way you won't feel rushed or distracted. I'd much rather go out with another person. Well, the thing is, well, if, they're the, if they are another artist as well, yeah, you, you, they know that, um, well, they're trying to, their aim is for the same thing, isn't it? So you, you don't feel rushed because they're doing the same thing. Even if somebody is doing it faster than you. Yeah, because we can just, sit. We yeah. can sit at a table, can't we? You don't have to talk constantly, though we tend to talk constantly while we're sketching. Yeah. Because you don't feel like they're bored. Exactly, because they're yeah. just doing their own thing. But you can also embrace the silence. Allow yourself time to think. Do a bit of toilet cleaning. <laughs> Not everything has got to be filled, has it? You haven't got to have background noise constantly. I know. I know some people, I see them walking the dog and... They're just on the phone constantly or they're listening to music. And I, th- I just think I don't want to be listening to music. I want to be making time for my dog and yeah. watching what he's doing. And, you know, it's worse when you see um, people with their little kids in a push chair and they're on their phones looking at their phones. And I think, oh, you need to engage with your child, you know, not, not your yeah. phone. I, I find that. It's just a sign. It's a tie. It's a sign of the times. I don't, yeah, I don't like is. that side of things at all. But it's anything you do, whether it's housework or or anything, it's so easy, isn't it, to just want to fill in the background with some kind of noise, whether that's music or the radio or whatever. So some- actually, I do fill it when I'm doing the bathrooms with a podcast, hmm. but somehow that still gets my brain going. Yeah. But just just don't always feel like that, you yeah. know. It's like like particularly when, like you say, when you're walking the dog, don't constantly have your phone in your hand looking at it because you're missing you're missing things around you and you just don't even realise it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, also, avoid reading or looking at your phone while you're in a waiting room or on public transport. So reading and scrolling through your phone will stop you from absorbing and noticing your surroundings. You wouldn't believe that was written down, would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I've been on a train in the past, you can look around and I would say nine and a three quarter people out of ten are on their phones. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for the three quarter. <laughs> wouldn't they? they? They'll be on their phones or they'll be reading something or they'll be, yeah. you know, very rarely do you see someone... Um, just looking out the window or taking notes of things they, you know, notice around them. You know, if you're a writer, for instance, this is the perfect time to get ideas for your characters, a bit like the coffee shop thing. You might see some people in deep conversation. You might see someone frantically running for a bus or a couple drinking coffee in a cafe window. Your imagination is (laughs) capable of turning any of those scenarios into the beginning of the story. So use it. Take notice of what they're wearing. Note down snippets of overheard conversations, which is a lot more interesting than reading a book, which you can always do later. And, and yeah, the trains are the perfect, perfect time to earwig. I love earwigging. I, I absolutely admit, hands up, I love earwigging. <laughs> I can't help it. But imagine if you earwigged and you had a little notebook and when you know you heard some random bits of conversation you sort of put them all down in a notebook just things you overhear can Wouldn't make it be really funny to then hand the person yeah. the note you've written about. what a lot of rubbish you've been talking look at this <laughs> no I, I do think that though and and it's funny because you look at people around on a train or on it or on a bus or whatever my, I haven't been on a bus since about 1980 something. But anyway, if, if whatever you're on, you look at somebody who's staring at their phone, this is of no interest to you whatsoever. But if I see someone writing notes in a notebook, oh gosh, all I want to do, and I can't do it, I really want to go and look over their shoulder. I want to know what they're writing. I must just be really nosy. But I, I find that person suddenly a much more interesting person than the one next to them. Isn't it funny, though, that you wouldn't get up and go look over that person's shoulder who's writing? No. And yet people will do that when you're drawing. Yes. I know. It's interesting, oh, isn't it? 
<laughs> well, I can say. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I think the essence of all this datey stuffy is that how, like, if you're with a partner and if you do the same thing all the time, you can get bored. You have to, every now and again, make time to do something a little bit different and break out your normal routine. That's what you're saying, aren't you? About yeah. The artist date. So, Worst thing you could be is bored. Yeah. So even just simple things, like we said, just walking a different route. We just need little things to surprise you every now and again. Like yeah. someone coming home with a box of chocolates or Maltesers or something. Yes. Yes. When it comes to being a true artist, life experiences are really important, both good and, believe it or not, bad as well. So notice everything um, you can. Embrace real life outside uh, situations outside of your own bubble. And by doing this, your creative well should stay at a healthy level for you to draw draw from whenever you need. See, I'm reading again. You can tell. Yeah, I can tell <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I think that's that's pretty, we've covered everything, haven't we? Really? Yeah. So, are we going to go on to what our previous yes. question was? Mm. And that was a list of five words to describe your art. And I'm going to kick it off with Kaveri Bar- Barath. And they say tactile, therapeutic, personal, earthy, and utilitarian. Do you know what's good about this question is that they're not, you can't get a long, long answer. Yeah, so like no, you, can't I give, that. you can't give me loads of long answers. No, <laughs> I, when I was giving them out, I was thinking, oh, can't do it this time. <laughs> Angela Wilson Co. Unruly, joyful, bright, relatable, and whimsical. I've got Hilary Milner, and she says quirky, abstract, humorous, colourful, childlike. Andy W. Art, detailed, intricate, I can't say that, intricate, careful, ink, and unsold. Oh, oh Andy. <laughs> I feel so sad Give it time. Give, give it time. Yeah. And, we, and he does some lovely stuff. Oh, he does. We, he really does. And we've got Mari McSween, and she says, bish, bash, slap, dash, joy. I love that one. I was going to say, that's, that's like how I'd imagine you, 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 you oh, describe it. bish, bash. <laughs> No, it's the kind of thing you would say. Yeah. <laughs> Slap it on. <laughs> ah, Jessica Wakefield Vetter. Ah, oh, eep. No, wrong. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Oh, we've all been there. Yeah, and I've got Carol Whitmore, and she says, unpredictable, painful, colourful, focused, unexplainably fun. Now, I would argue. That's six. That's six Sorry, words. Carol. You just no, get... Got- you just get maybe unexplainable or fun, but you can't have both. No. Uh, Elise Esquivel, creative, fun, tactile, dimensional, and joyful. And I've got Rob Myers, and he says, dark, bizarre, 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 <laughs> dark, bizarre, expressionism, haunting, surreal. Oh, and do you know what? I think that is such a perfect description of what Rob does. Definitely dark. <laughs> Definitely haunting and surreal. Yeah, really, anyone who hasn't seen Rob's stuff. Yeah, and I think Rob would on. do so well as an NFT. I, do you know what? I keep thinking, I keep thinking that. I have told him that. Yeah. You have told him, have you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, do you know I what? I nearly messaged him the other day and said, you need to go into NFTs. I, I, yeah. I think he would. So well. I think he would do really, really well. I so, Rob, too. that's what we want to hear you've done next, NFTs. Yes. Uh, Margaret Gray. Uh, Rob, Rob, if you if you put one up there for not too much money, I'll buy your first one. <laughs> oh, brilliant! I love it. Uh, Margaret Gray, detailed, vibrant, realistic, nature, emotional. And I've got Adrian Sutherland, and she says invisible, illusionary, mysterious, unseen, covert, covert. Does that mean she hides it away because she doesn't want anyone to see it? Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Oh, you've given me a really difficult name here. <laughs> Gioti Ranjan Rout. I'm so sorry if I've pronounced this wrong. Inspiring, creative, intuitive, joyous and meditative. I'll tell you what, joyous comes up a lot. So it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I've got Alan Green. Scruffy, untidy, messy, radical, in brackets, not. Uh, imaginings by Karen whimsical quirky playful narrative and endearing yeah I'd agree with that yeah and then I've got Ella Sky rainbow bold abstract bright colorful so we have got a brand new question for you which is 
What would be the ideal date for your inner artist and why? So what would be the ideal date for your inner artist and why? And as always, you can tweet us your answers at Kick Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group, which I suggest you join if you haven't. And we'll also put the question up there and, of course, on our Instagram page, which is Kick in the Creatives. And also, me and Sandra are also on Twitter as ourselves as well. I'm Tara ross And what are you, Sandra? I don't know. What am I? (laughs) (laughs) You're Sandra Busby Art, I think. Yeah, probably. So we're both on there as us as well, just just as an extra. There you go. Yeah, you probably prefer my Instagram stuff, though, really. (laughs) Okay, so I um, hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we are always so grateful when we get a little review. It, it's lovely. Um, so if you have time to do that, that would be amazing or even just a five star rating if you don't have much time <laughs> only five yeah and don't forget to check out and subscribe to our kick in the creatives newsletter you'll get updates on what challenges are coming up and we also send out some art tips and inspiration for the challenges so don't forget if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help tara and i support kick in the creatives you can now support us by buying us a coffee of course we don't actually spend it on coffee um but you can uh find the link on our website and what we do is it helps us with things like you know the costs of running the podcast hosting that kind of thing it really really does help us um we want to say a massive thank you to our latest supporters and they are sarah adams joanna brown carla hawk Ellen Astle, she says, a fantastic listen. Thank you. Uh, Also, Norma Lamming, she says, thank you. Lisa Montanaro, thank you for the laughs and generally taking the time to put out the podcast. You are so thoughtful about considering what artists need to keep them going. We have to support each other. That's very, very true. Uh, Joanna Brown, thank you so much. And, And also Marcia Furman for your continuing support. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Is that it for today? That is absolutely it, yes. Okay, so are we off now on an artist date somewhere? Well, um, no, I've got to actually go to work, <laughs> which I'm not happy about. <laughs> it's really boring stuff. I can't, there's no analogy that, well, maybe that's when the um, relationship is arguing. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Maybe. All yes. right then, we'll see you soon. See ya, bye. bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. Anyway, when it comes to being a true artist, life experiences are really important. I'm going to read that bit again. (laughs) I'm just staring at this banana. And I'm, I'm so oh, hungry, and I'm thinking, I wonder if I can eat this banana without being without anyone noticing. <laughs> go on then, have a go. What would be the ideal date for your inner... <sighs> Let me say that again. <clears throat> Too much banana in my mouth. Have you got banana in your mouth? <laughs> no. Have you? Have you tried it? <laughs> uh,